it turns off, and then we press and hold again, and it resumes. It works! <laughs> it works! So here's my stock lever here on my truck. As you can see, it has no cruise control. If it did, then I would have a button on the end and the slider for resume and on and stuff. The kits online that I've seen for this truck just appear to include this, this stock and have just instructions on how to get to here and unplug these harnesses and plug them back in. The only difference appears to be that the new ones include the buttons for cruise control. In the instructions, they mention a four pin connector which enables the cruise functionality. If you follow this harness back, let's get the light in here. You can see the four pin connector right in there. And it has wires connected to it. And they appear to be the correct coloring for what it says in the instructions for the cruise control. So, if my theory's right, if I go to pick and pull and get a working one of these stocks with crews on the end and hook it up, and I should be able to have cruise control on my truck, which would be pretty cool. I've looked online, I haven't seen any other information on this, so this may be a world first. To get in here and change the stock, what you gotta do is, you have to put the steering wheel all the way down forward, put the gear shift all the way down to first gear, and then grab a hold of the big facer shield that's holding this on, and just pry it out of its clips here. Just kinda all the way around until it comes out. Then you can put the steering wheel back up. You want to come down here to the plate that covers down here. You'll see two 10 millimeter bolts here and here. Undo them and then this will just come right off. Then what you want to do, then what you want to do is on the top of this unit here is a T25 Torx bit. And then there's another one right in there. Now this one is completely covered by the steering wheel, so what I find actually helpful is to turn it so that the gap here allows you to get a screwdriver in through the front, and then actually use a T20 Torx bit, and then it lets you to go on a bit of an angle, unless you're one of those rich guys that has ball and Torx bits, in which case you can use T25. Anyway, you just undo those two Torx bits. Then you have three cable harnesses, one at the back here, and then two on top of each other here, and then you'll have the four pin connector back in there. To undo your stock ones on here, you'll see a little tab. See the little tab right there. You're going to lift up on that with a little screw, flat screwdriver and then take out the harness. Same thing with both of these. You need to take the unit off the steering column to get access to those. After you undo those clips, you can take off your stock one without cruise, put the new one in, spray some contact cleaner in the four pin connector back there because it's probably sat open all of its life, and then slide the cable here onto the into the four pin connector, slide all these in. All of these harnesses are keyed, so they can only go into their proper ones, we don't have to worry about that. Then hook up the top Torx, and that one there, and then you're good to go. So I've got this new one installed from the auto wreckers. All the other functions work. High beams, and if key were in, everything else would work. Except this one has crews on the end. We're gonna go out driving and see what we can do about that if it works. So we're in the truck now, we've installed it. Uh, every, every, all the other functions work, like four-way flashers and turn signals. And we're at about 100K, and we're gonna push the button. And turn it on. And it's not working. Can we take another one? No. Okay, so it's not working. Okay, we'll have to figure out what's going wrong. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so we checked the interior fuse box and we're missing the 10 amp fuse for the cruise. So we're gonna take out one extra one from in here. Let's see, AC compressor. This will be easier with a fuse puller. Come on, get out of there. Okay, I'm not gonna get to that. Is there something else that we could get to easier? I don't see one. Okay, we're gonna head home and we're going to 
get my fuse pullers, get that out, and then we'll come back and try it again. Okay, so we replaced the fuse. I found a box of 15 amp fuses in there, so it's technically a 10 amp fuse, but I'll, this will work for now to see if it works. So we're just gonna speed up. Right now, 30K and 50K, 60 and 70K. We're holding at 70, I'm pushing the button. The light comes on. Okay, foot's off the gas. We're holding, it works, <laughs> it works. We're holding at 70. Okay, I'm holding the resume button. It's throttling up and we're going faster. 80 now, it works. Okay, it works, <laughs> it works. Brake, okay, it turns off. And then we press and hold again and it resumes. It works, <laughs> it works. $25 cruise control. <laughs> The fuse for the cruise, or the cruise fuse, depending on how you want to call it, is on the interior fuse panel. It is a 10 amp fuse, right there. Right there, I had to substitute a 15 because that's all I have on hand, but you want to go with a red 10 amp fuse right there. And then you will have cruise, and the only amount of money that you'll have to put out for it is however much you can get that for. If you can get it for free from a friend, then perfect, or just go to an auto wreckers and take it out from one of theirs, and you'll have Pretty cheap cruise control on your GMC or Chevy. To take the top and butter, to take the top and bottom covers off of the actual steering column itself, uh, you're basically just going to have to pry them off. They're kind of a pain. They have little clips on them, and then they have little hoops on the back right there, clipped together like a clamshell. Here's the bottom piece. So what I find is easiest is to undo these, just kind of like prying them out like that so that the back is free, then working around to undo the clamps, and then just kind of like forcing it out from here, from in behind the steering wheel. Because the little lips go in there and sit in behind the steering wheel in there like that. So just how to get them off. And then you also have the um, steering tilt lever. This just clips into this hole here. Uh, to be able to take off the top and bottom covers, you're just going to have to take a hold of it and pull it straight out. It can be a pain sometimes, but it just, all it does is just clip into this slot here. You can just pull it in and out as many times as you like. 